Welcome back, everybody, to another live stream. And today, I am here with my friends Becca and Jess from Adventure Cycling. Uh, they're literally just down the street. And today, we're going to talk about the Dynamo Jenny podcast that they have created. If you've not listened to it, you should definitely check it out. I put the link in the description below. Super well produced. And we're going to talk about the, the why and the how, all that good stuff. But before we do get going, uh, I want to thank our Patreon supporters. You guys keep the lights on, uh, help us keep this content coming in all these crazy times. So thank you, Patreon supporters. And if you're not a Patreon supporter and you like the channel, consider supporting the channel via, P uh, via Patreon. You get lots of good stuff, uh, like discounts to all sorts of brands that we've worked with, as well as some exclusive content. So with all that said, welcome to the show, Jessica or Jess and Becca. Howdy. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Was, was there a motorcycle in, in one of your two's rooms? <laughs> it, my windows are open. It very well might be mine. I apologize. <laughs> uh, so before we, before we get going, uh, can, you tell us, uh, can you tell the audience a little bit about what you guys do for adventure cycling? Start with sure. Becca. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Uh, so I've been working for adventure cycling for about two years, uh, and I work in our guided tours department. Uh, my title is a tour specialist. Uh, so I work on all of the kind of behind the scenes logistical details to get our guided tours out the door and running. We typically, <laughs> in a normal season, uh, not like the, our 2020 season, but in a normal season, we put on about 120 tours uh, for, in a calendar year. Wow. Okay. How about you, Jess? What do you do at ACA? Uh, yeah. So my title is a little weird. It's called Inbound. Um, marketing manager. And so what that really just means is I think about how are people coming to adventure cycling? How do they hear about us? And then how do we make sure that riding bikes for travel is really easy for them? And um, so that involves content as well as like some other things. So that's what I do. Cool. Well, so today we're going to be talking about the Dynamo Jenny podcast. I'm going to put it up on the screen real quick for people that aren't familiar. This is a landing page and currently there's six episodes, right? And they're all up right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, can you tell us about how the idea for uh, the, the podcast came about and what exactly, or who exactly is Dynamo Jenny here? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so kind of um, last year, almost a year ago now, um, I kind of had this freedom given to me at Adventure Cycling. Like I kind of finished this project um, at work and there was some leadership and strategic changes happening. And so um, I kind of had um, this golden opportunity to create some content for audiences and people that Adventure Cycling really hasn't talked to a lot before. Um, and so that includes women with a, um, well, I guess what I chose was women <laughs> and <laughs> with a specific sort of um, bent on making sure that we also got plenty of stories from women of color. And so um, I started gathering up that content, making those relationships, kind of thinking through how that would work um, and then came up with a, new, a, a newsletter. And so we, decided to call that Dynamo Jenny. And mm -hmm. that name was kind of a collaborative process, but um, it kind of came down in the end to this, these dual ideas. Um, one is the Dynamo, which everybody who loves bike, bike, bicycles knows is, um, is a generator, a bicycle hub. Um, but it's also like this energetic, lively person that's full of passion. And so um, you add Dynamo Jenny to that, and um, we're talking about someone who is out there, excited, um, ready to get after it on a bike, but also um, who might be that energetic 
uh, force for others as well. Um, mm -hmm. And so Jenny comes from this sort of imaginary person I have named Jenny Ortega. And um, she's sort of based on um, someone I knew from my hometown, um, which is Enid, Oklahoma. And so we, um, and so I kind of, yeah, made this character out of Jenny Ortega. And that's really who I wanted to talk to. Like, that's who I wanted this conversation to be for and this newsletter to be for. And so the newsletter started, we started gathering an audience and um, Becca met me like in the hallway and was like, I love Dynamo Jenny, the newsletter, it's so good. Um, I wanna make an audio component. And I was like, sweet, that's so great because I wanna make a podcast. I have a little bit of a budget to make a podcast. Um, and Becca was like, awesome, let's do it. What she didn't know was that I have no idea how to make a podcast. <laughs> Luckily for me, Becca does. <laughs> so, Becca, Becca, this wasn't your first. Your, this wasn't for your first audio <laughs> rodeo. It sounds like. Tell us about your background. Sure. Yeah. So um, before I moved out to Missoula to take my job at Adventure Cycling, I was actually working as a bike tour guide. Um, but even before then, uh, I was working uh, at WESA in Pittsburgh, which is the NPR affiliate station in Pittsburgh. Um, I had gotten a fellowship with them in my junior and senior year of college. And then I had become a production assistant on a daily talk show that was kind of fast paced and live and um, was set up like a daily news magazine. So it was dry segmented. We had live in studio guests and call-ins and things. Um, but I, I got to do a lot of editing and production work um, because we would have a lot of um, pre-edited segments as parts of those um, as part of that news magazine. So I had about five years um, of experience with with editing and production um, from my experience in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Because when I, when I heard that you you guys were going to come out with a podcast, and I listened to not even like a, a full episode, but the trailer, it had really good production value. <laughs> Thanks. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I mean, like right out of the gate, if you guys haven't listened to it yet, it sounds super pro. Um, we were talking offline uh, before the stream, and I mentioned that you know I have something that I'd call a podcast, but nowhere nearly as produced as as what the show is. Um, so how long did it take to gather all the interviews? Hmm. Go for it. So, <laughs> you want me to go? Okay. Sure. Uh, so we initially had a timeline of roughly, I think it was like five or six months, um, which turns out we undershot a little bit. <laughs> Probably should have given ourselves a little bit more time, but I would say that, um, the actual acquisition of the content and the interviews took us about three or four months. It was kind of a rolling process. And then we really buckled down and did a lot of the post-production in about a month, month and a half. Yeah. Uh, so what's the, the, what's the process like of taking all that raw material and trying to shape a narrative? <laughs> <out of> it? <laughs> it is, it's fun. First of all, before I get into the <laughs> to the uh, kind of frustrating bits of it, it is first and foremost, it's fun. It's something that I really enjoy doing because it's very detail oriented. And it's it's a really unique form of storytelling. Um, it's kind of like writing, but like, I don't know, you, you have the person's voice and aura in your ears. So it's like a really, I don't know, I really enjoy it. Um, so it takes a lot of time. <laughs> it takes a lot of time <laughs> to sit and, and go through and decide, um, well, we want that in there. Oh, that really doesn't go anywhere. It's just kind of two minutes of nothing and doesn't move the story forward. It, it's a lot of self-evaluation about like what moves the story forward. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where the, the timing comes in. And then there's a lot of <laughs> editing for quality as well, you know, running a bunch of processes to make it make it sound nice. Right. Uh, to what extent did you you guys have kind of a, a narrative arc already formed? Or, you know, was it wait until, you know, we acquired the content to, to see what came out organically? You can talk about that a little bit, Jeff. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of, 
both in a way. Um, having a marketing background, it's all about the story arc, right? Like you're, you know, your character is here, you want them to get here. How do you help them do that? And so we did that process of, of creating a story arc for the listener. And we kind of said, okay, this is kind of where we want to start. Cause the whole concept of the podcast is really about women bikes and how do they move through this public space? Because the bicycle is such a vulnerable form of travel and for women, it, they probably have a lot of different experiences while they're doing that, especially, you know, um, if they have different factors going on. And so we really wanted to get that range for one and two, we thought that there would probably be some overlap. So, you know, we wanted to start with history. The bicycle was this um, incredible promise of independence and freedom. And we really wanted to like draw that out and talk about what that looked like back then. And we had this great contact with a historian. Um, Tessa. That Tessa. Yeah. Let's, let's play that clip. Which, um, which episode does that uh, pop up in? Just for those that are curious, would that be e That's episode, episode one? one. Yeah. Okay. I'll play the audio. Um, let me switch to my other ear monitor here so I can make sure it's playing. <clears throat> Back in the 1890s, there was this really popular phenomenon of the six day endurance race. And this is one of those uh, rare and wonderful areas in which sexism actually really benefited women because the way that this worked for the men is it would be these like knockout drag out endurance races where wooden tracks would be erected and the spectators would stay in the middle and men would ride for six days straight and they would be falling asleep on their bikes they'd be taking cocaine to try and stay alert and it was just was kind of a free-for-all and yeah. as a result they weren't very fun to watch because it was basically a war of attrition until you know only a few people were still able to pedal. But when women started doing this, it was decided that because they were the weaker sex, they would never be able to do something like this. And so instead of it being a six day endurance race, the way that they would set it up is again, you would have these wooden tracks with the spectators in the middle, but they would only race for a couple of hours each night and they would do it for six days in a row and the laps would be tallied. And because of this, it was really exciting. And they were able to go at faster speeds. And in a lot of instances, the women were stronger riders because their smaller size meant that they had more compact bike frames and could corner better. And so this is an area in which a lot of the female athletes were actually stronger than the men. And their events were way more exciting. So what that meant is that the women's races were drawing way more crowds, there were stronger competitors, and they were getting more press coverage, and by basically every possible measure, they were a bigger success and had more popularity. Wow, it's such a great uh, excerpt there. Um, so you said Tessa was a historian. Um, I had That's no cool. idea that... I had no idea that uh, women participated in the six-day races, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not as recorded as well. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tessa's incredible. She's a lot of things. She's an artist, historian. Um, uh, she has a book coming out, mm -hmm. Eating Ghosts. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, and as you could kind of see from the episodes that you kind of showed uh, a screenshot of there that are on the website, there's a story arc there. There's um, and and we kind of came up with that at the beginning and left a lot of room, a lot of wiggle room, basically. Like so, okay, now we don't want to tell each of our storytellers what to say or what story is theirs or, you know, we wanted it to be really organic. We wanted it to be theirs, um, and we wanted it to be original and genuine. And so, you know, we didn't guide them at all. Um, we gave them topic areas in case that like helped spark something for them. But really they got to talk about whatever they wanted. And um, we helped them frame that story afterwards. And, um, and then we just, we did find that um, we had some really fantastic nuggets that sort of fit together within a theme. And so each episode has about three different storytellers in each and 
and yeah, so they all kind of fit a theme, trial by fire, doing something for the first time, um, hitting the wall, trying to get over really tough moments, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What's the, um, how long was each individual interview? <sighs> that totally depended on the interviewee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Usually Definitely. the raw audio ended up being, I would say on average, a little bit over an hour. Um, and they, but we got as much as two hours per person, depending on where the conversation went. And then typically each of those got edited down to about 20 minutes or a little under 20 minutes to make each episode about an hour. Yeah, cool. So we got a question here in the YouTube chat. Is it ongoing or is it completed? That's Are there going to be more episodes? <laughs> um, so that's season one, right? We wanted to launch one complete season that really um, had a start and a finish. And so uh, because I personally love to binge listen to podcasts, I'm a huge podcast fan. Um, I, that's kind of what I wanted for our listeners is um, to be able to do that. And so and then we get to wait and watch, right? Like we get to see, okay, how are people responding? Is this of interest? Are people, um, yeah, really, in there's that motorcycle again. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know if it's you. Um, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till the fire truck comes by my house. Right. <laughs> but um, so to basically answer the question, um, if, if the like time and effort were worth it and people are enjoying it and they find value in it, um, then we get to do a season two. Cool. So you know what that means, people in the YouTube comments, is that you should subscribe, <laughs> like our friend uh, Don here, who's subscribed, and our friend Karina42, who has subscribed if you guys want to see a second or hear a second season of a uh, podcast episodes. Um, Speaking of YouTube comments, let us know where you're watching or listening from. Uh, just throw it out there. And if you guys have any questions for Becca and Jess, uh, you know, put it out there and I'll, I'll highlight a few. So let's listen to another clip. Should we listen to the, the clip from Laura or from Stephanie? And which, which uh, episodes are, are they from? Um, um, go ahead, Stephanie. Jess. Yeah, so Steph Stephanie's episode four and Laura's uh. episode five. And so episode four is about, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Uh, Feats of strength. Feats of strength. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't remember yeah. either, so it's okay. <laughs> um, we just made the darn thing. Um, so uh, yeah, so Stephanie Cuello um, is in episode four called Feats of Strength. And it's all about, that whole episode in general is about, um, what does an adventure cyclist look like? Like, what are our preconceived notions? And the people we interview really fantastically and succinctly sort of deconstruct those misconceptions about who rides and why they ride. And so um, Stephanie's just an incredibly, uh, like one of the most intentional people I've ever met. And so if you, I, either clip is great, but I'd love to hear <laughs> Stephanie. Okay, let's do Stephanie since she's up here. Um, did you, in terms of the, the production, did you do all these online or did you have the opportunity to actually meet people and interview them in person? Uh, everyone was pretty remote from us. That's so um, yeah, we had to do everything virtually. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? The Missoula is like in the center <laughs> of everything. <laughs> yeah. We okay. just had the, the budget for all those flights and everything. Yeah, nope, right. easy peasy. <laughs> Hop on the private jet. <laughs> right. Okay, this is, uh, let's listen to Stephanie's ex excerpt. Black people never forget they're Black in any room they walk into. So when I am on a bike ride with a group ride, like, yes, I'm just one of 100 cyclists on this group ride but I am very wary of the fact that I am a black person on this group ride, always. And because that's not salient for non-black people, like they just don't think about it. Like sometimes they just disregard it altogether, but sometimes it's really like, it's just not something that they understand, which, which makes sense. We all navigate the world very differently. But you know, when I hear people talk about their travels, 
you know, and how nice people were to them or, you know, that sort of thing. Or they talk about how they saved up and, you know, quit their jobs to go live in a van or to go live in the jungles of Thailand or whatever it is. You know, they seem to think that that's like some sort of sacrifice, you know, as opposed to an example of like unmistakable privilege. Wow. Intense stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this is, these are topics that aren't usually spoken about when we think bike touring and bike packing. It, it's kind of just generally glossed over. Everyone has a good time, you know, outside is free. Um, what was, I mean, what was the, the rest of the, the conversation like to, to get to this point? Uh, you know, it was, again, kind of echoing what Jess was saying before, we really wanted our subjects to guide our conversations and we really wanted them to choose what story they wanted to tell. Um, and so for Stephanie, um, the story that she wanted to tell uh, was about kind of this tension that exists for her uh, between uh, the way that she grew up and kind of merging into this uh, outdoor, this world of outdoor recreation and how there is a lot of um, inherent privilege in being able to recreate um, and how not everybody has that privilege um, or access to that privilege. Um, it was a wonderful conversation. It was one of my favorites. Um, yeah. Jess, do you want to add anything? Um, well, I was just so excited to get to interact with people who were really thinking these deeper thoughts, navigating these deeper issues, and um, willing to share them with us. And because it isn't something that you get to talk about in bike touring a lot and bicycle travel, but it's relevant to, you know, sitting on that bike and pedaling away from your house, especially for that first time. And so um, I really wanted to tap into different people's experiences um, and get at deeper issues because there are so many fears or constraints that, um, a lot of people feel keep them from doing that. And so um, if you allow people the space to talk about that and um, the platform to get those out to other people, then, you know, we make everything more accessible. So that was kind sure. of the goal there. And Stephanie did a fantastic job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, on the um, on the channel, I've been working on this um, interview series called uh, "Bike Packing While Black," and I interviewed some uh, uh, black bike packers that follow the channel or that I've interacted with in the past. And one of the things that you know they we we talked about was like there's this ad added layer of, of planning for for some of them. It's like you know they just can't free camp. You know that's not an, or no one felt comfortable free camping. You know, because if someone popped up, they probably wouldn't give it, be given the same benefit of the doubt. And, you know, something as simple as that, which people, I think, take for granted or say, yeah, anyone can do that. But the reality is not not everyone can. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what's I guess what's been the reaction to the podcast so far? Have people embraced it or have you gotten the, you know, why, why are you making bike touring political <laughs> kind of comments? Um, not yet. Um, not, uh, we have had overwhelmingly positive reactions. It's been fantastic. Um, like really good comments on the website, emails, um, great comments on, um, social media and things like that. Uh, I have gotten a few comments that like are, um, so I've kind of focused our Instagram um, on the podcast and, um, you know, um, women cycling and bike touring and, and just given them a bigger lens, a bigger proportion of that lens, right? And so I have gotten a few comments that's like, 
this needs to have more male input and more <laughs> men. <laughs> this needs to have more men. Uh, this is this is sexism, and I'm like, well, you got the last forty years of adventure <laughs> cycling, right? right. Like, <laughs> can we have some? Just a little, a little bit. <laughs> so. But over, yeah. it's been it's been really fantastic. Yeah. Cool. So we've got uh, Omaha, Nebraska in the house. Uh, our friend Don from Longview, Texas, Colorado Springs, even Hollywood. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you guys are in the YouTube uh, comments. You know, let us know where you're you're watching from. Also, if you guys have any questions for Rebecca and Jess, I will pass those on. Uh, so let's listen to our next or the the last clip, and where uh, someone cue this one up. Um, I think it's it's Laura, not not Laura Crawford, but a different Laura. Uh, which which episode is this one in? So this one's in episode five, hitting the wall. Um, Laura Killingbeck uh, gave us a little bit more of a narrative story. Um, it was a little bit less uh, kind of question answer interview format, um, and she gave us kind of this awesome. Um, story about her wanting to renew her visa so that she could work um, in Colombia, in South America, um, but needing to renew her visa and deciding that in order to renew her visa, because it had become increasingly difficult to do so in Colombia, she was going to bike to Venezuela and cross the border and, and renew her visa in Venezuela. And the way that she was going to do this is that she was going to bike tour there, but she didn't have any gear. So she had to get a $50 bike from a shaman and bought a Hello Kitty backpack from a flea market and found a, a partner to ride with her who is a mathematician, uh, a French mathematician, and they took off together. And it was one of the most delightful and hilarious stories um, that I've gotten to hear. And she was very, very generous with her time. So this is kind of just a small chunk of, of that larger story. Right. Okay. So this is a uh, Lori uh, Killingbeck episode five. This guy walks up to me and he's like, "Are you Laura?" You know. And I was like, "Yes." And he said, "I want to come bike with you." <laughs> and so I was like, "Great." I was like, "Hey, you know, so do you have any experience biking?" And he said, "No." And then I was like, "Oh, well, do you have a bike?" And he said, "No." And I was like, "All right." <laughs> And um, and the whole time this this conversation, of course, is in Spanish. Um, so I'm learning Spanish as a second language. Matias, this person was uh, was French, and so he was also learning Spanish as a second language. And so we were communicating in a second language as well as we did for the rest of the time that we knew each other. Um, to add an, an interesting layer to those to that communication, we went and we got him a, a very cheap used bicycle. And, you know, similar thing, we threw on a duffel bag and, and he was good to go. And so uh, we left, <laughs> you know, we just kind of <laughs> biked away um, out of the city of Bogota. <laughs> nice, I, I'm gonna zoom in on the photo here. I'm assuming <laughs> that this, this might be him. That is, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the way to do it, people. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need those, those fancy Dyneema bag. Just get a, a some bungees and some trash bags. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, um, that story is ridiculously delightful. If you don't listen to anything, be sure to listen to that. <laughs> yeah, I like the I like how it challenges the the notion that you have to be super pro about everything to to have a, right. a bike adventure. <laughs> I think that was a, a pretty common theme in a lot of our stories was just kind of localizing the idea that um, that you don't have to have a bunch of fancy stuff <laughs> to get started um, or to get fulfillment out of it. Um, yeah, I think that was a common, a pretty common theme. Cool. Sweet. So let's see who's in the chat. We've got uh, Trey, uh, localish to Missoula, someone in Montana at least, uh, from Bozeman, uh, Mel Melbourne, Australia, uh, Arcada, our friend Karina, who just recently subscribed to the podcast, might I add. Uh, <laughs> we've got Japan, uh, Alvarado, Texas, and our friend Sean Gold, who's always in the chat, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, so what are, I mean, is there anything that, 
that was unexpected that you guys learned in doing the podcast? Okay, if we both opened it, we both <laughs> started our little thing at the same time. <laughs> go ahead, Jess. I will let you go first. Okay. Um, well, luckily for me, uh, one of the greatest and most wonderful surprises was learning the incredible skill that Becca actually has for podcasting. Um, because otherwise, it this podcast wouldn't sound like it does. Um, she did a phenomenal job. Um, in fact, the whole process, like, like I have too many degrees in literature. I know how to write stories. I like understand sentences, but you give me audio. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, so now we need to do the thing where you plan it on the you know, and, and the stuff. And she's like blocking. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and so like she like like she had the know-how and that is why it sounds as wonderful as it does. And I, I that was such a phenomenal surprise to me. Um, the other great surprise was um, or, or kind of maybe it's not a strange surprise, but it was kind of surprised to me was the fact that um, I've almost every single person that we interviewed said at the very beginning, oh, I don't, I don't have any stories. Like, I'm not even very good at this. I only do it like every once in a while. I've only gone on two trips. Like, what do I have to say about bike travel? Um, and then they start talking and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, yes, please tell me how you did the Baja Divide Trail at having ridden 30 miles in your life. Like, <laughs> like tell me about all the times you cried doing that. And then like, um, and 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 so it was really fantastic to um, kind of be surprised in that way, like them coming in with that expectation, giving us that expectation, and then coming out with it, out of it, with um, like the this like, are you are you kidding? You've given this us this incredible <laughs> nugget of truth that comes from your personal experience. And so um, we did have one person who was very much like, uh, I've lived an amazing life, and I want to tell you all about it. And we're like, do it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So is that that Baja anecdote a real story in the in one of the episodes? Yeah, nice. that's yeah. episode three. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love those stories. I mean, I I feel like it's it's you know touring adventures or or just stories in general. They're always more interesting when it's not you know someone that's super well prepared or is like a master or something. You know, because for for them, you know, you know that they're going to finish it. It's just a matter of you know how how fast, but there's no real sense of drama or or conflict or or, or anything like that. So right. it's pretty cool. Yeah, and we kind of wanted to highlight those moments of either insecurity or failure, or just really highlight that it doesn't have to, it, and it doesn't go perfectly for the majority of people. Um, and just to like peel back that facade that everyone is out there doing it perfectly all the time, because that's all that we see on Instagram. Um, right. But, you know, just kind of like really revel in those moments and, and let people know that it's okay <laughs> to be there <laughs> to like be in that, <laughs> be in that it for a second and move forward from it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so any surprises for you in, in the production of the podcast? Uh, I think one of the biggest surprises for me was maybe that adventure cycling gave us as much free reign as they did. Um, nobody really checked in. I, I mean, like at a certain point, we were like putting up uh packing blankets in one of our conference rooms so that we could like uh, noise cancel a little bit so that Jess could start recording voiceovers and things. I think maybe someone was like, uh, what are you guys doing? But <laughs> for the majority of the rest of the time, everyone just kind of left us alone. <laughs> we were just kind of doing our thing. And that was kind of a blessing. That was really, um, it was really nice to have that kind of creative license over it. Um, and to really sort through that process, just the two of us, um, so that we could really hone in on, on what we wanted, um, and then also work very directly with our subjects and figure out what they wanted to, um, yeah, I think that that was probably the biggest surprise to me. <laughs> A nice, nice. surprise. <laughs> yeah. So Jess, how was it doing the, the VO? Did you, did you need much coaching or? <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
the, the voiceover got um, unexpectedly complicated. Thank you to COVID-19, which like <laughs> to complicate everything in our life. Yeah. Um, so we had to get a little bit creative and, um, and it took like a lot of back and forth um, because I would listen to it and I'd be like, oh, that sounds great. And I send it to Becca and she's like, well, do you hear X, Y, and Z and like these other 10 things? And I was like, no. So I wasn't that harsh. No, 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 no. You were wonderful. She was very fine. Um, if, yeah, if, if anybody needs an editor, Becca is a phenomenal editor. Um, and so, uh, because she makes you feel good and she like, makes it better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, you know, at first I like tried to set up my closet, but I, I live in this incredibly tiny house and the closet is like, um, like my legs stuck out. And so that didn't work <laughs> out. And um, so then we like hung up the blankets and did that whole thing. And um, and all this time, you know, we're writing this voiceover. Um, Becca and I um, co-did that and uh, and like editing and, and working through it. And what was really fascinating for me is um, what a great editor just saying things aloud is and trying to figure out, okay, how do I actually make this sound like I'm talking to someone or like, <laughs> like a lot more natural, a lot more just uh, like a conversation rather than me writing up some, you know, essay like thing. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was a fascinating thing. My favorite, honestly, my favorite part was how many times I had to redo the um, <laughs> the middle section of episode one because there are all these French words. <laughs> We're talking about the, the Tour de France and La Course um, and the script that Becca had written, which is wonderful, includes all these names. And so I'm like Googling. <laughs> I know. I'm like Google Translate, listen, like what does it sound like? Um, and then I'm like repeating it. And um, my partner Dan, who was working at home with me, was just like, you sound terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, don't I mean he was probably nicer than that, but he's basically like, like, you're not you're you don't know French, do you? <laughs> and so then, then I was like, I wrote in, I wrote in like the, the part of the script that was like, I am so sorry, France, because I am going to butcher every single word that comes out of my mouth. Um, so that was, yes. that was pretty fun. Yeah. For, I know like for uh, the, the few times I've attempted VO for, for a podcast, um, there's kind of a real like performative aspect to it. You know, you're, you're just not reading. You have to put in those kind of pensive pauses and work on intonation. Was that difficult? to do or how much coaching did you have to give Becca? <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, it just was kind of a natural. I mean, there's, there's always going to be that initial point where like you listen to yourself do it for the first time and you're like, Oh no. That's not work. <laughs> but like after you, after you listen to it that first time, you, you kind of figure out how you need to tweak. You're right. It is very performative, but it's like, it's this performative like conversationalism like you have to sound like you're just talking to somebody else in a room but it has to be very still very measured so you're like doing this like fake casualness <laughs> and it's very awkward it's it's very difficult to find voice like that and i think that Jess did a great job considering that we you know i essentially gave her like a couple weeks to figure it out which <laughs> was kind of cruel on my end, but uh, I think that she did a wonderful job, and she, yeah, she's she was a natural. <laughs> it took it took took a few a few takes. <laughs> so, have you heard from any women or, or or young women that you know listened to the podcast and felt inspired um, to to go out and and do their own trips? Not yet. I Not mean, yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Fingers you will, you will after this YouTube live stream. We're just right. gonna all, all flood your your email. <laughs> Excellent. That is exactly what I would love to yeah. see in here. Um, I think that probably you know the pandemic has put a lot of uh, a damper on things, but people are buying bicycles in droves and mm -hmm. um, remembering that bicycle in the garage. And I think this could be. Um, a, an impetus for change, you know, really get more people out on bikes and interested in slow travel and 
um, seeing the world in a new way. So cool. Well, let's say uh, season two comes to fruition. What would or who would be your your dream guest or or story to capture? Do you have oh, any man. anything on the on the docket yet? <laughs> I have some musings, <laughs> but I, I don't actually know if I have like a, a firm subject in mind yet. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about maybe instead of doing like the, and I think Jess, you, have, you and I have talked about this, but instead of doing like a segmented episode, we, we look at doing one longer form story um, across the six episodes so that we can really hone in on some specific uh, topic areas with just one subject um, and try to tell an interesting story. That way, there are really a lot of different avenues that we could take, um, and I'm excited about the possibility of that. But no, I haven't, haven't really thought about who <laughs> we would talk to quite yet. So if you're out there, get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. <laughs> Yeah, if people have suggestions, um, I've actually been getting quite a few suggestions um, via email. Um, we have an email, it's dynamogenny at adventurecycling.org. And um, that has been one of the bigger responses is like, oh my gosh, I know this amazing person would make a great uh, person storyteller for your podcast. So we're always open for that. I've got a list running. What's the email? Dynamogenny at adventurecycling.org? Yes. Okay. Bam! <laughs> That's so cool. It's like the CNN crawl. Yeah. See, see, guys. G C GCN can't do that. They just don't have this technology. <laughs> so, so ahead of the curve. Um, well, you two have really set the the bar high. I feel like so. You know, second season or uh, season two might be, you know, <laughs> a little hang ringing to 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 push that bar <laughs> higher. Thanks, Russ. I appreciate yeah. that you like the first season. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you like the first season. If we yeah. utterly fail in the second season, it'll be okay. <laughs> All right, so where uh, where can people find the podcast? I'm I'm assuming beyond just um, they can go to adventurecycling.org, download it direct directly through. Uh, through these things here, um, where else can people find the podcast? Yeah, so it's available for download and subscription on any of the major listening apps. So just pick your favorite um, and uh, you can subscribe there. Um, you can go to adventurecycling.org slash podcast. Um, yeah, I think that's all the places people typically get them. <laughs> <laughs> and is it on Spotify? Is that mm -hmm. is that? Spotify, okay. uh, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, okay. Google Podcasts, um, Stitcher, uh, Podcast Addict, like like <laughs> fifteen of them. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I've been. You know, we we have a very small podcast on on our channel, and um, it's interesting creating for a podcast as opposed to YouTube because YouTube you can create video content and host it for free. But a podcast you actually have to pay for and like do all the hard work of getting it out there. So in terms <laughs> yeah. of, of being discovered, it's, I feel like it's a lot more challenging than than being on YouTube in, in lots of ways. Oh, that's so. really interesting. I hadn't yeah. really thought about it, but you're totally right. Maybe a video <laughs> podcast for, for season two. <laughs> Just to make it more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do people think? Like... <laughs> Yeah, who, who wants the video podcast of season two? Let us know in uh, the comments below. Um, it will totally make Becca's job editing a complete nightmare. <laughs> I can tell you that now. I cannot promise I know how to edit video. It's so good. Right. <laughs> we might have to add a third person to the... Yeah. There you go. Expand Imagine the team. That. Yeah. Right. After I... Um, um, sorry. But after no, I... Saying? Uh, I was listening to all these podcast uh, outros, all these credits that were running um, because I was like, how do you write credits? And so um, <laughs> listening to all these like ones that I love and listening to the number of people that they list in those credits, like teams of 15 people or more. I'm just like, wow, we did a great job. <laughs> 
<laughs> we are two people. And two. Uh, yeah. And so um, having a bigger team would be great, but. <laughs> All right. The people want, the people want video. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the YouTube subscribers want video? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unheard of. Uh, right. <laughs> it is it's slightly biased in, in this medium. Um, <laughs> Cool. Uh, so if people have uh, suggestions for the show, dynamogeny at venturecycling.org, good email to, to, to send those <laughs> suggestions and stories of inspiration to, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there anything else you want people to know about the podcast? Um, if you like it and you would like to <laughs> <do> a review, <laughs> that is actually how um, like iTunes and things like that judges whether a podcast is any good and will kind of get it out there to other people and things. And so um, we would love to see some reviews, love to hear from you. Um, and if you know people who would like to be involved, um, especially women of color, I pay for the, that content. Um, I now have it in the budget um, for the newsletter as well as um, the pod, a season two for a podcast. And so, um, you know, I don't want people to work for free. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. Proud of it. Yeah. Cool. And I think the, the main thing that I also want to convey before we wrap up here is that um, we are just the people that, I don't know, uh, put the stories out. Like we, the stories aren't ours. Um, and I am so deeply grateful. And I know that Jess is too, to all of our subjects who gave us their time um, and wanted to be a part of our project. Um, we really owe them the project. This, you know, this is as much theirs as it is ours. Um, and, you know, we're, we just happen to be the people on the, on the YouTube channel, but really like we didn't have anything without them. So we really owe them big time. <laughs> What's been the, the response from the guests after they've heard the episode that they were in? pretty positive everyone's been been really supportive yeah um like Jess said before a lot of them were really were really humble when they when they came into interviews and said that you know oh I don't I don't think that I have a story to tell I don't think I'm going to be that interesting and um and they all turn around and and emailed us back and said you know uh I didn't know that it was going to sound like that and it sounds great and I, I think that everyone is relatively pleased with how it turned out so cool well, I think I'm going to take us home here. Uh, but if you guys haven't already, be sure to check out the Dynamo Jenny podcast. It's on uh, adventurecycling.org, as well as all your fine podcast applications slash purveyors, all that good stuff. Um, and with all that, I want to thank our guests, Becca and Jess, again, for joining us this evening. If you guys have any you know, suggestions or comments about the podcast, the email is scrolling below. Because technology. <laughs> <laughs> because technology. <laughs> right. I love it. Take that to the end. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so thank you so much. It's so funny to do um, kind of a re remote uh, video setup for this when when you live down the street. Yeah. Uh, with, with <laughs> yeah. We're living crazy times. <laughs> yes. These are. Yeah. Thank you so much, Russ. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Russ. Cool. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, you know, consider supporting the channel on Patreon and uh, be sure to check out the ACN show that is happening tomorrow. It's on the ACN channel and we'll have other videos for you guys this week. So until next time, keep the supple side down. Good night. <laughs>